Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. If you watch my channel, you'll know that I'm always on the lookout for good quality, affordable telescopes that would suit the beginner. In the past, I've reviewed this telescope, the Skywatcher Heritage 130P, which is a simple Dobsonian that can give you great views and certainly is a good first telescope. But people ask me if it's a suitable choice to look at the moon and the planets, and really, for that, it isn't ideal. So I found an alternative. In this video, I'm going to unbox a telescope that should give you good, high magnification views of the planets and the moon. This is the Skywatcher StarQuest 102 Maxitoff, and we're going to open up the box, take a look at it and uh, put it together. So what about the box? Well, looking on the side, the first thing you can see is that it's got a net weight of six kilos. Now, that's a good thing. Heavy telescopes don't get used, especially by beginners. So this is an easy box to pick up and I'm hoping it's gonna be an easy telescope to move around. The box is about a meter long. I got it from First Light Optics in the UK and they always carry their, their warning, which is true of buying all Astro kit. So you gotta expect some bad weather after buying new equipment. Let's open it up. Okay, so lots of boxes within a box. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, at least five boxes in here. So um, if I was to guess, I'd say that this is gonna be uh, some part of a tripod, and probably this is the optical tube assembly of the scope. Now normally, when you get a new scope, um, the idea is to, uh, to have a look at it straight away, just to check that the optics are in one piece and nothing's been dropped uh, during transit, but today, uh, because I'm going to try and build this uh, scope up to see how easy that is, I'm going to go for this box first, which I think uh, should contain some or all of the tripod. Let's take a look. And so inside the box, yep, yeah, we've got what looks to be a, a spreader bar, which will separate out the legs of the tripod. And the tripod itself. So as you normally get with Sky Orchard kit, everything is wrapped up in lots of plastic. So we'll take, take the plastic bag off. Got a bit of polystyrene foam here. And there you go. So it's a lightweight tri aluminium tripod. Clearly the, uh, the spreader bar is going to fit in here. I'll put that on in a moment. And you can see that there is a fixed uh, bolt here, which I think is going to screw um, in and out so that we can attach the mount to the top of the tripod. So far so good. Let's try this one next. Okay, so that's good. We've got an instruction manual and it looks like it covers the three uh, models in the StarQuest range. So there's the one we're uh, looking at here, which is the Maxitoff. There's a refractor and then there's also a, uh, a reflector telescope. So yeah, it's uh, about 20 pages of instructions, probably half a dozen pages per model. Then we've got some more foam. Lift that out. Oh, now this looks quite impressive. So this is obviously the main part of the mount. So this telescope comes with an equatorial mount. So we'll be able to line it up. Uh, so it's quite easy to follow the stars. So let's have a bit of a look at this mount in more detail. So before we look at the, uh, the mount itself, you'll see that I've attached the uh, spreader bar. So it's quite simple. There were three uh, wing nuts. Each of those screws into a hole um, in, this, in the pieces of metal that the spreader uh, inside the tripod. So you can do that and you can tighten them all up 
and that should give quite a robust uh, tripod. It does recommend you should keep the spreader bar in there. Obviously, they're worried about the tripod um, sort of uh, collapsing and the scope falling over, but um, I guess that at least gives you the option to clamp it all together. And returning to this uh, rather nice looking mount, let's have a look. So here it is. Um, it's got a thread you can see underneath, which I guess the first thing to do is put it through the central hole in the tripod. And then whilst we hold on to it, just tighten up the, uh, the bolt that we saw. Turn it around so you can see it. Tighten up the bolt underneath so that it is attached securely to the tripod. And you can see at this point, as shipped, this part of the mechanism is um, is loose. But we'll uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. Okay, so just to. Uh, Give you the slight illusion that I follow instructions on everything that I buy. Um, you'll see that we followed, so far, we followed the tripod instructions and we've screwed the, uh, screwed the mount into the tripod. And if we turn over the page, everything else is seems to be showing us um, a detail of the mount itself. So hopefully some of these other parts we're going to find um, as we open up these other boxes. So enough of that. Um, let's try this one. Ah. Okay, so that is just a box. So free gift with a cardboard. Try this one. This one is heavy. So um, open this one up. More bubble wrap. What's inside? Well, I guess this seems to weigh, weigh about a kilo, so it's telling me straight away that it is going to be a uh, counterweight. So I'll take that out of the bag. Producing lots of, uh, of plastic here. Bit of escapology. Right, there you go. So it's a counterweight, which is going to obviously allow us to balance the telescope. So we'll put that to one side. So what about this one? So if we open this one up, we've got a few things in here. We've got uh, a red dot finder, which will attach the telescope in a little while. We've got um, what looks to be a, a counterweight bar. So basically, I anticipate that this uh, counterweight will attach to here and we will use it to balance the telescope. You'll see that all together in a little while. We've got a couple of these. Now these are called control rods or slow motions and we'll see how they attach uh, in a moment, I guess. And then what else? Well, we've got three other boxes within a box. We've got a 90 degree diagonal, a um, 25 millimeter wide angle eyepiece and a 10 millimeter eyepiece. Now, if you're into Skywatch kit, you've probably got a few of these already. These are standard eyepieces that uh, ship with a whole range of uh, Skywatch models and they're pretty good quality for starter uh, eyepieces, to be honest, but we'll, we'll have a look at that, um, plug them in and we'll try that out um, another day. Right, let's uh, carry on a bit. So as you recall, when we put the mount on top of the tripod, it is loose. So basically, if I turn it around, hopefully you can see on here that there is a scale here. And that is actually um, a scale of numbers. And you want to set this um, mount so that the little arrow is next to the latitude of where you, uh, what your location is. So where I am is about 50 degrees, so which is conveniently about the angle that it is shipped at. So what I'm gonna do is, and if you need to adjust it, you can use uh, this 
adjuster here. So this is just rotating the mount and hopefully you can see that it's changing the angle. So I'm going to leave it so that it's round about 50 degrees and then I'm going to tighten up the mechanism using this bolt here. So we're going to tighten it and now it's pretty rigid. So now we're set up to use this as an equatorial mount at roughly 50 degrees uh, latitude. Now, when you get into precise um, setup, you want, it's quite important that that is exactly on your latitude because you'll find then that the telescope is much easier to use and that when you are trying to follow an object as the earth turns, you'll only need to move one of the axes of the mount. But for now, it's close enough, basically set it to your latitude. So the next bit in our box of bits was this, the counterweight and the counterweight uh, bar. So looking around, you can see here, I hope that there is a, a hole, a threaded hole in which we can put the, uh, the counterweight bar. So I'll give that a go. Get it started. And then speeding things up a little bit. Hopefully you can see that we are attaching that to the uh, mount. Now I'm free to adjust, slide the uh, counterweight up and down, but for now it doesn't really matter. We'll see where it needs to be once we've got the whole scope together. So what you can see here, I guess to start with, is we've got two uh, axes. So the mount is basically locked at the moment. Nothing seems to want to move. Um, I can loosen this knob here on the top and then I think we'll become free to move this way around. And similarly, I could loosen this knob here and then it should be free to move that way. It's a little bit stiff. But okay, let's tighten those two up for now. Not too tight. And see what's left of our bag of bits. So we have these two slow motion rods. Um, so if you look along the end of one of these, you see it's got, it's got a screw. And basically you just need to undo the thread of that screw, not all the way so the screw falls out, but just so that it is not protruding into, into the hole there. And then you've got a couple of places on the mount where you can attach it. Basically, you can see here, there are some bronze fittings. So you have to orientate the, uh, the rod so that the, the screw goes over like that. And then basically there's a flat surface on here. There's a flat bit. Uh, just there, hopefully you can see it. You're gonna put the rod on and then effectively you're tightening that screw against that flat surface. Just do it by hand for now. In fact, there isn't, there isn't an option to put a screwdriver on this one, so you're just tightening it by hand. And you, you should know when it is attached. And then the acid test is if you turn the rod the mount turns. So this is a slow motion. So this basically is the way that you'd move the mount when the um, when you found an object and you want to move the telescope so that the object stays in the field of view, you'll be adjusting one of these rods. Should only be one, but it could be both. And then to finish the job, we're going to just attach the other one of these, same same deal, you've got options to put it on either side. You've got one here and one here. And then on the top here, you've got, um, if I can turn it round, you've got options to attach it here or here. So for now, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna, I'm gonna attach the other rod on the other side. Same procedure as before. Find the flat spot, which on this one is upside down. Slide on the rod and tighten the screw. Now, it's a little bit 
little bit fiddly and obviously you can do this properly yourself and I'm just doing it quickly to see uh, to get the basic setup complete so hopefully that'll stay on there wouldn't guarantee it but okay so that's basically the mount together so it's an equatorial you can adjust it for your latitude um, and we'll see how easy it is to use in later videos but for now we're going to complete the assembly until we can see the whole star quest so what else at this point before we get to the the big reveal on the telescope um this part this mount weighs about four kilos so far this part of the setup and it's got a payload the uh, the maximum weight that the, the mount can carry in terms of a telescope on top of it is listed as three kilos in the uh, specification so the telescope itself that we're going to put on in a minute has a weight of two kilos so hopefully the whole thing will weigh six kilos and the mount will be well set up to carry a telescope of that size and be stable enough so uh, let's take a look okay so we've saved the most important box tool last so this is the optical tube assembly so let's open it up so inside there's uh, lots of packaging as we've come to expect a bit of cardboard some more bubble wrap and inside there's the actual tube which uh, is wrapped inside a plastic bag. Take that off. And then you've got some more bubble wrap. And then finally, a bit of uh, tissue paper. So there it is, the optical tube assembly of the 102 Maxitoff. Um, things to notice. Well, first thing you do is always have a look inside. So everything looks uh, okay inside. There's no flex of paint, uh, no obvious uh, damage. The, uh, it's clearly all in one piece, which is always good to check first. Um, secondly, you'll see on all Skywatcher products, you have this warning label. So basically this is very important. It's telling you never to look at the sun. Never look uh, at the sun through any kind of optical aid, telescope or binoculars, because uh, you're going to damage your eyes, um, you may go blind. So this is a warning that's there to tell you, be very careful whenever you use a telescope during the day. If it's ever, basically just never point it near the sun and always make sure that you don't leave telescopes unsupervised during the day if there might be children around. Okay, so warning dispensed, take away that label for now what can we see so we have got um, around this end take these two screws off we've got uh, this is where the eyepieces and the and the diagonal will attach this is the focuser so that's going to move the mirror up and down the tube underneath we've got a dovetail so this is the mounting block this is how we're going to attach the telescope to the mount we'll do that in a minute and then this is a bracket to attach the red dot finder so we've got one of those obviously that came inside the kit uh, here it is so we're going to basically slide that into the bracket like so and tie it up with a screw like that so we can probably have to align that on another day. We'll, we'll do that in another video. And that's basically it. So um, the telescope's identified, made in China. It's got a 1300 millimeter focal length. So there's 1.3 meters of light travel inside this tube, which is a pretty clever feat. Uh, but certainly one of the reasons why Maxitoffs are popular because they're very small in size um, for high magnification which is why hopefully this telescope should be suited to uh, the moon and the planets. Okay, so last thing we've got to do is attach it to the mount and plug in a couple of accessories. Right, so let's attach the tube. So on the top of the mount here, we've got a, um, a cradle basically to hold, to attach onto this dovetail bar. So all you do is you loosen off this screw, 
as you can see here, and then you should be able to attach the dovetail inside that groove and tighten it up. Now, let's have a look at this. There it is, the scope attached. So basically, the important thing is on this mount, there's only one screw. Now that screw is the only, only thing holding on the optical tube. So make sure it is um, attached tightly. Uh, a higher spec mount would have two of those screws, one with being a backup. But with this one, it's very important to tighten it up. And you've got to not worry that you might make a mark on the uh, dovetail bar. Probably well, all telescopes have got that when they've been used. The most important thing is that you have attached it properly uh, and it's not going to fall out because this telescope, like pretty well any other one, will only, if you drop it once, there's a pretty good chance that's it, it's done for. So tighten it up, make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, let's have a look around the back of the scope. So the last thing for us to do is to plug in the accessories. So we had a diagonal mirror. So let's have a look at that. Came in a bag in a box, and this is going to turn the light through 90 degrees. And basically, we're going to plug it into the back of the scope, loosen off these two screws, and tighten it up like that. And then finally, came with these two eyepieces. I'm going to take the, the 25 millimeter, which is going to be the wider angle, it's going to have the bigger field of view of the two eyepieces that are supplied and the lower magnifications. That's always the one to start with because it's easy to find objects at lower magnification. And then we're gonna plug that in, tighten up these screws, and we're pretty well ready to go. So that is all of the assembly done on the StarQuest 102. And everything basically seems to work as we'd expect. Okay, so that's the unboxing and assembly complete. Um, my first impressions of the Skywatcher StarQuest 102 are very good. I think it's gonna make a good package. Definitely grab and go at this weight, under six kilos. Uh, equatorial mount, which is gonna be useful, and a tube that's big enough to hopefully give us some good performance on planets, the moon, and uh, objects like double stars. So. For the price, um, I paid just over £200 in the UK, it seems like a good first telescope for someone who wants to look at the planets and the moon, and an alternative to something like the Heritage uh, Dobsonian. So I um, hope it's been useful. In another video we'll uh, find out how well it works and we'll uh, look at some of those objects and see how to set it up under the stars. So look forward to doing that. If you like this video, then please subscribe to Genom's Astro if you'd like to see more videos like this, and thanks for watching.